Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome. Thank you so very much for joining me. This is Smash That Small Paper Pad, the process video. And what I tried to do in these process videos is share the real life with you. This part is going super, super fast because you know how to tear a paper pad apart, but I just wanted to show it to you. Smash That Small Paper Pad is a collaboration. It comes out on the 25th of the month. And to give you the real life insights, I started this on the 16th. So lots of time in advance, I thought, plenty of time, no worries at all. I'll tell you during the video if I feel like I'm struggling or having troubles. The other thing that's really nice about the Smash That Small Paper Pad collab is there's no pressure. You don't have to finish it. You just have to smash it over multiple months. So when I do collabs, especially this one, I had these interesting cut aparts with the get well soon and the adorable doxy and the puppy with the happy birthday and those recollections balloon stickers. So once the paper is chosen, which you guys generally do on my channel, then I know, okay, sometime this month I need to get started on that and I'll throw things in a bin that I think I could use. It adds interest. It helps get things used up. These two cut aparts, I don't even remember where they came from. I wonder if one of you happy mailed them to me and they were adorable. So I wanted to use them, but I kept moving them around. And finally I was like, oh, I could use them in this. These Recollections Balloon stickers, I think they came from my friend Noni's junk. She was like, mm, no. She probably purchased them in some sort of batch or lot at a garage sale. And when I do smash that small paper pad, I approach it differently different times. Sometimes it's, oh my gosh, I need a whole bunch of cards, let's go. This time, I wanted to do different things in the video for a couple different reasons. A, because I was trying to stretch myself and use these items out of my stash. And also B, because many of you said, I have that same paper pad and I don't know what to do with it. I found that the majority of the papers I really liked and I even liked both sides and struggled to choose a side. The one with the... I don't know, it looks like a periodic table chart. I struggled with that one. The orange was on the back of the billiards balls and I liked both sides. I really needed the orange for some of the cards. There you can see I had already stamped on that card base. See, it says what a beautiful difference one single life made, but the bottom was messed up. I don't throw anything away. I knew I would cover that up later and use it. It just didn't work for the card at the time. The happy birthday, the, the blue just didn't work. There is blue in that paper, but it wasn't even close. So I added some, uh, the denim one to it, something about jeans, I think. Before that, it was salty ocean and it was just too bright. In this part of the video, I'm using art glitter glue. Very often, I'm just using what I can find. <laughs> it, I have art glitter glue and barely art and I like them both. I think if you have either, you don't need the other. Sorry about the camera bracket showing. I swapped my camera bracket at one point recently and have now changed it back, but this was the 16th of September, so <laughs> we do have some footage with my camera bracket showing. I have a shortage of card bases when I'm filming this, so sometimes you'll see me set things aside because I need to add the card base later. Sometimes I have cream but not white and I'm using both. So there's dry time in real life process videos. I also, did you see what I just did? I made the card, it was crooked so I trimmed the edge off. It's fine. Nobody checks your measurements afterwards. Sometimes I trim my card base, sometimes I trim my card front. It's just fine. In Smash Our Stash, which is a collaboration to use up your stuff. Uh, flowers was the theme last month, and I made a bunch of flowers in the colors that went with this paper pad. But then I decided to keep the cards really neutral, so then I struggled to use the flowers. But I'll use them in something else. There's no right or wrong. You see, I glued the happy birthday onto the background and then trimmed it. Whatever you want to do. Any sequence that in the end makes a product you like, then you're good to go. <laughs> there I'm struggling and flipping the paper back and forth because I like those 
billiards balls. And I didn't know. I stopped and I'm like, oh, the colors don't work with the candles. The candles are like jewel tones. So that didn't quite work. Here we go. We've come back. We took a quick break. That's why my papers tidied up a little bit. And then we came back. Now I'm digging through the embellishments that I made in Smash Our Stash and trying to figure out if I can use them. That piece of book page, that's exactly what it is. A torn piece of um, a craft magazine from the 70s that Leona gave me. Kind of a book, you know, a how-to. Then I punched a whole bunch of petals and layered those little tiny things that I can never remember the name of. Tiny dots, dots, those puzzle things that you guys are doing where you put in the tiny little plastic things. Oh, it'll come to me like days later. But you know, if your friends do those, but you're not into them, they're going to have a million tiny little things left over and they make amazing embellishments. Oh, I was going to get some more from Noni yesterday and I forgot. I'll have to grab some of those. Then I was looking for thanks for the background. I was looking for the book because I wanted the same font. Is that obsessive or what? So I just gave up and I used craft paper. I found the book the next day. Once I glued this all down, and I'm using a really old adhesive runner here, uh, Hermafix Dotto, that needs to be used up. When I glued it down, I didn't like it. Had I been thinking, it was Hermafix. I could have pulled it right off and rearranged. But then there was another error. I had to cut the thanks again. That's why there's one down there and I'm still cutting. I think I had paper in the die. So the S was all messed up. It didn't cut. It wouldn't come out. I think my die wasn't empty when I layered, laid it down and ran it through. There you go. The card is just off. There's like this big open hole and it doesn't work. And I didn't have any of those embellishments for the center things. I didn't have anything else prepped with that. I loved that embellishment that I made. I just, I couldn't figure it out. And then I tried to put that giant flower and then I tried to put a little flower. We're going to have to set this bad boy aside and think about it later. And that's exactly what I did. I was like, let's make a different card. That's totally fair. It doesn't always come together perfectly. Uh, little disclaimer, I'm using the notebook that you've seen before. What this notebook has is the measurements so that you can have a layered card and have a 1 8 inch border on each side. But what I'm doing is different. Like where it says cardstock mat, very often I'm cutting that size with patterned paper because I'm mixing up my layers. This wasn't necessarily a video where there was a formula of small pattern, cardstock, big pattern. Then I'm experimenting with different papers. That is the Michaels paper that I believe they call navy. There's nothing darker. It's pretty royal, don't you think? Now, I talked about this in an updates video. I just used that purple tape, that highlighter tape. Then I had to get out my adhesive eraser because that happy birthday thing had sticky junk on it. So that's why I'm not in love with that highlighter tape. If if you're not familiar with that, you can watch it in updates and get the explanation. I really liked how this card turned out. I think I should repeat this concept a bunch. The cardstock behind it and then the circle matches the cardstock. Christy Marcotte has a great big circle one that hangs off that she makes that I like. I like asymmetrical things and I really liked this oval. The happy birthday I think was just out of my stash and I pulled it out. That's a new happy birthday stamp that I've been using a lot and am enjoying. So that card I think came together super quick. Nice card for mail. At the very, very end, this is a two-part process video, I'm going to add enamel dots to some of these. I was really careful about the bling. I've got a plan. I've got what I think is a good idea. Maybe not the best execution of it, but stick with me. So I'm getting out all my heat embossing stuff. If you need to learn heat embossing, do not learn it from one of these videos. I have a heat embossing, I think, 101 video. This is the WOW Embossing Ink Refill and Freestyle Tool. It does not work very well with stencils. I have better ideas for that later, but I tried it. I learned from it. But anyway, don't learn heat embossing from this video. 
I got out my static removing powder bag right there on the right. Never even took it out of the package. That's a common thing that I do. I bought the much more modern version of that thing with the little powder and the brush. And it was so heavily scented I couldn't handle it. I dumped the stuff out. I was going to put cornstarch in it. I donated the thing this weekend. The idea is cute, right? It's not real smooth embossing. So I have to go back with a marker. This is a embossing marker from 100 years ago. I think water and a paintbrush might work. I don't know. And then I filled in the gaps. So I hit it again. It's a little warped and warbly, but you get the idea. There's another one later that I like better. Similar concept, but better execution of it. Since I didn't love it, I'm like, okay, we're done heat embossing for now. Then I got out my happy birthday dies. The one on the left isn't the most masculine font and I've used it quite a bit and I've had it. I like it. The one on the right is newer and it is not scripty and fancy at all. I think it works better for a masculine card. So I die cut it in silver for this card. I don't know why I didn't use like the gray puffy foam stuff. That would have been good for a masculine card too. I don't know why I didn't think about it. I went right past it and in my brain I wanted it to match the plane, which it doesn't exactly match the plane anyway. Then I remembered the quickie pen. I don't know for sure if the quickie glue pen is the best idea for these really thick mirror cardstocks, but I tried it. And if they fall off when I send it to you, then you should definitely tell me. <laughs> like I'm going to send a birthday card. Come on, people. <laughs> That's not going to happen. It's just not my strength. The quickie pen or any of these glue markers. We used a lot more of them years ago before wet glue was so popular. They're really nice for the super fine dyes. That pen is in my stash. It's just an item I forget to reach for and I get out my art glitter glue or barely art and then think, oh, where's the quickie pen? I like the stars that it cuts. That fourth star right there at the end that I have to grab, that one doesn't cut all the way. So every time I have to pull that one out, like the, the corner has a little flaw in it. I like the star on the plane. I don't know if that represents some plane that did something bad in history, but I just liked it. It was cute. You know I like stars on everything. Done with that card. Going back to this one. Haven't given up. Found the book. The craft book. Same font. Thought that might be the secret. But I could not find any similar flowers. I think I might have some more somewhere, but I couldn't find them. I didn't have any of those little embellishments from those puzzle things. What are they? They're like paint by numbers with plastic. You know what I'm talking about. If you make videos, you know, when you turn on the camera, you lose your ability to remember words. Okay, now I've decided how I'm going to fix this card. So I get out my little wood things and my ink and I'm going to clear emboss this and what the heck? That was not clear, was it people? <laughs> That was my jar of miscellaneous stuff that was left over from snowflakes. This is when I remembered that I'm out of fine clear. I have a super chunky that Noni gave me, but I have used up all my clear. So then I decide, okay, we'll just dump some super chunky on there and see what happens. It's, it doesn't lay down quite as nice, but it really, really makes a great big pop. And I like it with the minty and the white. So then I wrote mostly white on the jar. It's mostly white because it's got some glitter in it. It's got a lot of random stuff. I figured a little bit of glitter was okay for this card though, because we're already doing flowers. It's not like we stayed masculine. Remember when I make some of these process videos, I mean, this is days later, right? This is over the course of weeks. I forget you're there sometimes. So I don't always, check the camera. And I apologize, but I'm just crafting away. The music's going. I'm, I might be talking to Mr. Crafting and relaxing. Look at that paper on the back. I love both sides of that one too. If you have this paper pad, I'm telling you, get it out. You could make a set of birthday cards for someone and give it as a gift. It's a really nice paper pad, I think, except for the couple of rejects. Okay, this is what I'm going with. And I tried to experiment with some smaller flowers and what I'm doing is finding petals that I haven't layered up and layering them up. And I'm thinking I could go 
ask Noni for some of those. And then, I don't know, I thought, well, it's a little busy and just decided to go with it. I don't think when you look at it, you think, oh, she ran out of those. Maybe you do because the left and the right don't tie, but I think it's still a fun card. I think I'll use that book page embellishment idea, but change up the layout in the future. Thanks so much for watching. Part two will be out later this week. I hope you're enjoying these. Bye-bye.